Hi, Team Flyer. How are you? We made it. We made it all the way to the last Wednesday of this beautiful August. We made it all the way to a very special Go to Fly event. It's our very first one all month long special with Brianna Salas. And without further ado, you know she's right here. She's right here looking at me. We're looking at each other, just saying, waving. So, hi. I'm doing like my pump in the air. Hands. Yeah, okay, I'm about to say I'm back on, and everybody already knows I'm here, so it's okay. It's like, we're here, we're here, we're here. <laughs> They've been here, they sat down with us for three episodes, this is our fourth one in, and they know that, you know, we start with you, of course. First of all, happy birthday! Hey, thank you! Oh my gosh, I can't believe, I literally can't believe I'm 23, I still feel like I'm 17, but yay, I'm so happy. Well, you happy. definitely look 17, but your soul, you're, you may look 17, but you are mature beyond your years. I can give you that, I can guarantee you that you. for sure, my gosh. Thank you so much, that so, means a lot. For all those who don't know, I know a lot of you do, because I've seen all your posts, um, her birthday was yesterday, but still, <laughs> like, we're here to celebrate because my goodness gracious, um, Virgo gang, what's up? <laughs> I know, right? I know a lot of Virgos. I know a lot of people, I know a lot of Virgos, period, and then a lot of people who were born in September, like, yes. my best friend is also a Virgo and is born in September at least, yeah, so just Virgo babies over here, big love my astrology so you know if you need anything on astrology, I got you <laughs> we got you too I post about astrology all the time to like our insta okay. stories and whatnot I used to have this little part of like earlier this year about astrology and whatnot and then Latina took off so I couldn't do that anymore but I do have like the insta stories and I'm Aries and I'm full of fire and I'm like a dragon like in the Chinese horoscope so it's like all the passion of the fire right there okay so you know way more than I, I take everything back and I'm absolutely <laughs> hold I don't forget I totally remember you telling me that you would do my tarot cards and I'm holding you to that yes <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> the tarot cards, the ancient cards like everything like I'm, I'm a witch so I like and then you and me like really like witchy kind of absolutely. stuff absolutely and absolutely once Don't again you. if you've been in this episode if not this not this episode sorry this this special <laughs> these episodes plural uh you know that Brianna and me are really good friends and we start talking before you and or before recording better said and we were like, we gotta talk tattoos, and we gotta talk about, like, all this kind of witchy stuff, and then we were like, okay, we should record, because this is the moment we need to <laughs> we should record, and then, <laughs> let's work first, and then we can play. Yes, <laughs> because... exactly, work hard, play hard, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> so, today's episode, like we said before, it's very lighthearted. It's very yes. deep in many different ways, but we consider it a little bit lighthearted in comparison to the previous episodes for different reasons, yes. and we wanted to finish with this one because well it kind of makes sense literally with her life story so that's what we're here for um let's make sure people who if this is the first episode that you're listening to you know we've talked with brianna salas all month long from team kaylee and a million more things we talked about eating disorders we talked about addiction we talked about toxic vibes and today's about lgtb and for those who are listening to for the first time about brianna salas can you tell us again a little bit what do you do who are you? Well, first of all, to anyone who's watched all of these, I am so sorry for the same spiel I've been giving every time. Uh, you're Don't be really sorry. We're through it. You're getting more fans. They're like, oh my God, there's going to be more fans. <laughs> exactly. Brianna Salas. So introduce yourself, girl. You do you. They're cheering you on. So um, I'm Brianna. Hi. Uh, I'm 22. I am an ex. Excuse me. You're, you're, you're held? Oh my God, I'm 23. Oh God. This I is know, right? <laughs> It's gonna happen for the next four months. I'm gonna. I'm I know it always happens. So I'm like, oh my god, feliz cumpleaños! You're 23. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so um, I'm 23. Um, now I'm 23, and yeah, I'm a singer, actress, uh, entertainer. You know, part time podcast specialist. <laughs> exactly. You know um, she'll be back. You know, Brown oh, Salas will sit okay. down again with us. Yes, if you think this is the last time you're going to hear from us together, that is the biggest joke of 2020. Exactly. Aside for, for, for the whole year, but still. Aside for the whole freaking year. But yeah. yeah, we'll be back. Well, we have plenty of surprises, but we just can't unveil them just yet. But continue, my yes. love. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's me in a nutshell. And I'm really just thankful that I've had this 
whole month um, of just space to talk freely and openly about things. Um, just the amount of love and support that I've gotten already from it. Um, and not just love and support, but people being very honest about their stories and, you know, feeling comfortable to talk to me about it even. Um, you know, that's literally why I did this, why I do this. Um, so I, I'm just really thankful for that. And to be ending it on a very light note, you know, like you said, it does get deep, of course, to a certain extent, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's, it's very lighthearted because it's, it's probably the best thing that could have ever happened. To because me. it so, brings you peace. That's the it thing. Does. That's it why brings- it's lighthearted in a good way because the rest you have to go through those struggles and be, you became the person who you are today because of them. And you'll, you'll be at peace with them. You haven't been at peace with them just yet. Let's put it that way. Like we've discussed previously, you know, you're right. still going through certain struggles and you still are taking yep. care of yourself, mind, body, and soul. But I think with you coming out, it's just, it brought you a whole new light and sense of, you know, fulfillment and self-discovery. And that's just the best feeling to have and that's why we're like oh this is actually really really nice of course 100 percent. to like just be more yourself um so yeah we talked once again we we it's a it's a journey so you started with the eating disorder and then the addiction we talked about toxic people and this led you to find your inner voice your innermost self you know yeah. walk us through your personal feelings of your sexual orientation how did you feel towards guys? How did you have self, like self-doubt, sorry, and disbelief that you could be a lesbian? You know, oh God, it's crazy because it's so weird to be taught one thing growing up and like have this idea in your head um, and think like, this is the only way, this is it. This is the only thing I've known. So this is what's right. Um, and being taught that for literally 22 years. Um, I, I didn't meet my girlfriend until, um, after my 22nd birthday. So I, for 22 years, again, I I was living in this kind of bubble and I will say that there were certain instances, you know, when I was in high school where I was like kind of teeter tottering and like, okay, well maybe this. And then, you know, I grew up super religious and, um, so again, when I say I was taught one thing, I was literally taught (laughs) one thing and like, this is the way. And so any of those feelings that I had that might have been skewed from what I was taught was just automatically going in my suppression box and automatically like, no, that's not even an option because that's just not going to happen. Like you can't do that. And uh, it's really, it is really sad, you know, that my brain was kind of programmed in that way of like, that's not even an option for you. So don't even think about it. Um, and when I look at my past experiences with guys, um, I always knew, first of all, I had never been in a real relationship. I had never had a boyfriend. Um, and I'd been in different kinds of situations with boys or whatever, but um, never fully committed. And it was definitely something that wasn't just a coincidence. I always felt like something was missing whenever I was with someone. Um, I never could get to that emotional place. Like I, I almost felt like there was like a huge wall that I had and I didn't know what it was. And I was to a point where I was like, oh my God, I'm I'm literally just gonna die alone because I I can't connect to anybody. Like I can't have that emotional connection with anyone. Um, And it made it like very, it it was very weird because, you know, I have friends who have boyfriends and I see these beautiful relationships and I'm just like, oh, why can't I feel that way? Why can't I do, you know? And little did I know why truly. Um, and it was just, it was definitely obvious to me that thing was missing, but instead of being like, okay, well, something's missing and I, I don't know what it is. I'm going to find it. It was more like something's wrong with me and I don't know what it is. You know, I didn't know what it was. And even at the time, like, um, before I met my girlfriend, you know, I, I came out to LA again to pursue my music, to pursue my acting. So at the end of the day, my 
focus was always my career and what I can do to improve myself and my career and da, da, da. And I never let that stuff like skew my vision and, and take me away from what it was that I was trying to do. And so I never even had any experiences with girls before then. Like I, I didn't meet anybody where I was like, oh, I think I like her. Like I just didn't. And so I really was confused. I was just like, oh, okay, this is just like, whatever. I'm not even going to think about this. So then when I did book Team Kaylee, um, that took up literally all of my time. I couldn't give anyone any of my attention, like not even like in a playful, like I'm bored and, you know, want affection, you know, kind of thing. Like I literally didn't have time for it. I didn't have to, like I've said throughout this whole thing, I didn't have time for bullshit. <laughs> so, and that's literally not just discredit anything in my past, but that's what everything was in my past. <laughs> so I was like, I don't have time for this bullshit. I can't like put myself through this shit again. And so team Kaylee happened. Um, no interaction with anyone in that way at all. And then team Kaylee ended and it was summertime. I went home, I visited my family. Um, and I came back and <laughs> I went to, oh my God, it's like a crazy story. This is where it gets into like meeting my girlfriend because this is literally just the journey of it. Um, and I got back from home and I go to a music festival with my best friend and one of my other friends um, who, <laughs> it was just this whole thing and I don't want to out anybody, <laughs> but oh. long story short, <laughs> I like, <laughs> brought them together to come like hang out and like we all were hanging out at this music festival together. And weirdly enough, the guy who I was friends with um, was actually the one who showed me Lauren's music, who is my girlfriend, Lauren's music, like back in 2018. And I found like posts of me um, actually posting, listening to her music in 2018. And, you know, didn't think anything of it because I'm like, oh, this is an artist who I have, you know, no access to. So like, I'm not <laughs> even... <laughs> um, and then when we were at the festival, we were getting a tattoo actually. And Hunter FaceTimes Lauren and my best friend Andrea is like, wait, you know Lauren? And he was like, you know Lauren? <laughs> and it turns out <laughs> my girlfriend and my best friend grew up in Indiana together, like middle school best friends. And then when Andrea came out to LA, Lauren came later and Lauren became best friends with Hunter. So then we were just this like weird squad of like, people who just like randomly know each other and so we're in the tattoo shop that night and I'm not gonna lie I like I was pretty drunk that night and I was just like oh my like I this is too much I was like oh my god I can't like we're on the phone with Lauren Sanderson right now oh my god I like took the phone from Hunter and I was like yeah hi Lauren nice. oh. and I was like oh my god and curly <laughs> moment right there <laughs> it <was> so <laughs> crazy um but the reason that we started talking actually was, and it was like the craziest thing. I cannot explain to you. It was like the second that I realized like I could like meet this girl, like, and there was just something that I literally cannot explain. I have never gone to someone's Instagram and been like, holy shit, I am like, totally into this person that I don't even know. Like beyond like, I'm crushing on this person. I was like, no, I, I have to like get to know this girl. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know what this pool is, but like I have to. And I did. I, I, <laughs> I schemed a little bit uh, because I genuinely love her music. That's one of my favorite things about her too, is I, I genuinely love her music. And the fact that she is one of the only, you know, female artists out there who uses female pronouns and is totally 100% herself and not scared to show any side of her and, and be who she is. Um, I think I, I felt like very inspired by that and almost like, okay, like, whoa, that's really sick. And it gave me, you know, a sense of like security almost in a way. And again, these are feel new feelings that I've never ever felt before for anybody. And I did a cover of her song on my Instagram story. 
Um, mm. It was very planned. <laughs> it was very planned. I was like, I'm not going to tag her because then she's going to think I'm a fan and she's not going to want to like, she's going to be like, oh, this is like, you know, this girl's just like, whatever. And, da, da, da. and like, I was like, no, I need to like make it known that like, I like this girl <laughs> more than just like liking her music. I don't know what it is. Um, and so I didn't tag her <laughs> and I was like praying that Hunter would send her my story of me doing the cover and he did and thank you Hunter because that's literally what started us like DMing and I was I uh, I cannot explain like it was the easiest conversation just like I go through our DMs sometimes like I'll scroll to the top and like look at where it started and it really was just like going off of each other so like beep 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 and like non-stop conversation just about like things that I don't talk to anybody about like not even like opening up as far as like being super deep but just like someone who genuinely cared about what I had to say and like what I was going through and I genuinely was you know listening to her and just feeling very like, wow, like this is weirdly like really easy. And there's like a comfortability that I feel here that I've, I've never felt in my life with anybody. And I just knew like, you know, aside from like all the like, oh, like Lauren and she's so cute and da da da. Like I, I really can't express the feelings that I had inside it because it was something new. And I feel like, anyone who understands that understands that it's like indescribable and there really aren't any words for it and one morning I, I knew I just had to meet her you know because everything was still online at that point um and I just knew I had to meet her in person and I was a nervous freaking wreck and my best friend Andrea set it up she was like I came over to her house to pick her up from the airport at freaking 7 30 a.m I'm like getting ready to go back to bed like sleep and she was like, oh, by the way, Lauren's coming over in three hours. And I was like, oh, what? Like, literally, like, how are you going to just drop this bomb on me out of nowhere? <laughs> so, of course, I immediately run up, shower, get ready, blah, blah, blah. And fast forward to her walking through the door. And, oh, my God. I just get, like, chills when I think about it. Because it's, like, ah, the most ah, indescribable feeling <laughs> ever. Like, Oh my God. It was like something came over me and just, oh my God, I can't, I literally can't put it into words. Like, I'm like, if you could see what I'm doing with my body right now, like, it's because it's just like, wow, like that's something that, you know, you hear about, like, you know, when people are like, when you know, you know, and that was that moment for me. Like the second she walked through the door, I was like, I know. And this it, it literally felt like the last 22 years of my life made sense. And anyone who knows me, anyone who I talk to about Lauren or, or meeting Lauren, that is something I always say is that it feels like the last 22 years of my life makes sense now because they didn't before. And like I said, I felt like I did have that missing piece. I didn't know what it was. I thought something was wrong with me. Um, I thought I was never going to find anybody. I was just going to end up settling or I was just gonna be alone and to have that feeling of like oh just kidding this is it mm -hmm. and to just like feel that it was truly the craziest feeling in the world and I wish I could we talk about it all the time I wish we could like go back and like be flies on the wall during that day because I, I mean I was like, wreck the whole time <laughs> it was crazy because we it just turned into this thing we're like okay now we see each other every single like we couldn't go a day without seeing each other we talked non-stop like I, I felt like a week into knowing her we had already we weren't even dating at the time officially and I feel like after a week we were both just like oh we've been dating for the last 10 years like it just felt like Ugh, it's so crazy to look back at it now and be like, oh my God, we were only a week in when we were, you know, feeling like we'd been together for so long. It, it just, when you know, you know. And so I'm very, ah, I get like, <laughs> that's, that's 
like this is a lighthearted episode. <laughs> exactly. Cause this is like, it's, it's, oh my God. So I do agree. Like her, your body, um, expressions and you know just <laughs> waving your hands and just your face lit up completely and <laughs> it's so magical to see that not only you know because we're good friends and I'm so happy like to see you so happy but just in general when you people find love and it doesn't matter if it's same sex or, or not of course but when you find the one when you find that love and I get the same way every time I talk about my husband and I get the same way of like, whenever like, Oh my God, like, how did you meet? And all these sorts of questions, of course. And you just face is like, you just know, you just like, Oh my God, this. <laughs> so oh, um, <laughs> like, I get it completely. I it's love so, it's so funny now that like, you know, we go back and we look at so many things. Cause like, again, like I said, like I was like so nervous to post about, you know, or post um, me doing her cover. Cause at the end of the day, I was a fan, and I tell her that now all the time. I'm like, babe, I literally listened to your music, like, for a year before I met you, like, and, you know, it, it's just really crazy to look back at it, and just the way everything played out, and now I literally get to be her biggest fan, her, you know, craziest, like, fan ever, and... And it shows. I love, I love, I love how proud you are not only lgt be proud but just proud of just like this is my girlfriend this is you know because i do the same thing with my husband like he has his projects and i'm his biggest cheerleader and vice versa Absolutely. you know and i love that because it shows it shows through your posts and through your insta stories and like in both ways obviously and i adore that because there's something so genuine about that there's something that like just seeing a picture you're like wow like you feel the love coming through a screen and I know 100%. that, like, I know you both, obviously, but even if I did it and you would see the screen, <clears throat> sorry, you would see the feed, I'm getting all sorts of emotions, I'm already crying because I always am, but, like, <laughs> it's just so special, like, I know what that is. Um, I know your, your following, both of your following can see it, and just, you make people so happy with that happiness, and people are so happy for you. Thank you. And this is why it's a lighthearted episode. This is why, like, we want to make sure that if you're thinking of coming out or if you have doubts or if whatever, you know, we've gone through it. And um, whatever it is that you end up choosing, this is what's mm -hmm. on the, that side of the rainbow. And, like, yeah. that side of, like, being yourself. Yes. And even if you're not in the LGTB community, it doesn't matter. But the fact that you're thinking about talking to that special someone, like, that crush yeah. or whatever, like, just this is the feeling that we want you to obtain. Like, right Absolutely. Um, okay, so like, when did you feel that it was time for you to say something out loud to really come out and like appreciate and celebrate yourself? Totally. I mean, I think, I think that's a great question because like it, you know, took me a second too to be like, okay, I like, what's going, you know, because again, it is question, not questioning um my feelings it's it's more just like this literally is just a completely new thing for me like I I we had conversations about it her and I like going to dinner and talking about where I was at and just being super honest and weirdly enough there well a few things weirdly enough is I felt extremely comfortable literally a week into meeting her of just being like sitting her down and being like literally like I am gay this that is who I am because I never understood it before and now to feel this sense of security in myself and to feel this freedom and to feel this huge weight off of my chest um and to feel like I'm not crazy. Like I'm not, some, nothing is wrong with me. Um, you know, understanding why things never worked in the past, understanding why I could never get to that place. Um, even just, it's weird to say it, but just indicators early on in my life of like, I never felt fully comfortable with guys. Like as much as I love my dad and my brother, like literally the two greatest men and my grandpa, like three, sorry, grandpa. Uh, three greatest men in my life, you know, um, other than that, like, I, I always felt a weird, like, energy with guys that I, I couldn't understand, like, I, I never liked having a guy doctor, whenever I did voice lessons, I had to have a female teacher, whenever I did dance, I had to have a female teacher, whenever I did 
literally anything, piano, guitar, blah, 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 always had to be a female, anything. I, I just found that like weird comfortability. And of course, when you're a kid, it's very different. And even growing up and being an adult, when I still felt those things, like being like, I don't feel comfortable around guys for some reason. Like, just like what, like literally what is wrong with me? Like, that's freaking weird, but it's not, it's not weird. And it's totally normal. And I think it's a lot more normal than we think. Cause when I talk to other friends about it, um, you know, I have a lot of friends in this community. I have a lot of friends who are gay, who are bi, um, who are bi curious, who don't have a label. Um, just all these different, beautiful, valid um, things that I, I felt too comfortable telling my friends and telling people. Um, and I think being surrounded, I was blessed enough to be surrounded by a lot of supportive people and not everyone was supportive. Um, sometimes it's the people closest to you, you know, that it's like kind of harder. But as far as my friends go, I mean, the second, oh my God, the second I told literally my best friends, I think every single one of them was like, oh yeah, we knew. Like we saw this coming. Just like, <laughs> like automatically. I went to my best friend, Elise. Um, I went to her mom. I, I came out to her before I came out to my parents. Um, and I was like, well, Luna, I have a girlfriend and I am gay. And she goes, oh, honey, I knew. I was just Aww. waiting. <laughs> I, was like, honey, I got you. <laughs> because everybody else knew. I think just that happens like, a lot. It happens a lot more times than we realize. Like, oh, they, 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 was that obvious? Okay. Literally, I, I was mean, like, yeah, I don't know what it was, but, you know, maybe it was like all my failed relationships in the past and me being like, I secretly just like, bleh, you know, whatever. <laughs> so, um, but I think like a really big thing for me um, that – you know, a lot of people don't know. Um, I wasn't planning on coming out to my family until at least we'd been dating for like six months. So then that way, you know, it was like, hey guys, like this is what's been going on for the last six months of my life and da 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 da. And luckily I have the most supportive, like amazing sister in the world. And I was able to talk to her about it. Um, and she gave me a lot of love and a lot of support and a lot of strength during that. Um, you know, when, because again, I, I did grow up very religious and it was crazy because <laughs> thinking I was going to wait six months and then literally seven days later, again, we aren't even officially dating. I took my dad to dinner to tell him that. And what I did was I actually, I told him first um, before I was like, I met someone because that's the thing too is like, I think a lot of us struggle in, with how to tell our family who might not have the same views um, and, you know, agreeing to disagree and da-da-da, all that. And it, it is hard because you also don't want to be invalidated in the sense of, well, this is a phase and, you know, this is your first experience and da-da-da. You know, you don't want to feel that invalidation. So when I came out, it was really important for me to make it known that this wasn't a phase because I know it was new. But for me, I had no questions about my feelings. There was no questioning anything. There was no figuring out anything. I just knew. And so when I came out, the first thing I said was, I like girls. I didn't say I met somebody and I'm dating someone or we're talking. I literally just said, first and foremost, um, I like girls. And that's how I started the conversation. And then it got into, and I'm talking to somebody, seeing somebody. And then a month later, um, I told my mom and, you know, Thanksgiving rolled around and they invited us to Thanksgiving and then they invited us to Christmas. And uh, I think that's something that I don't want to go too deep into as, as far as like my personal, you know, what happened with that and everything. But I think, I do want to touch on just, you know, I, I get a lot of DMs about people who are scared to come out to their religious family. Um, and I completely get it. If anyone understands, it's me. And I'm not going to sit here and lie and say that it's easy because it's not. And it's not, it wasn't like a smooth process. You know, I, I, I wish it could have been like a congratulations, happy thing. But, you know, it, that's not the case for a lot of us. Um, and I think it's really important for me to at least just touch on it a little bit and 
show that there is, like I said, a rainbow at the end. I can't express, I did not think my parents, you know, were going to invite us to Thanksgiving so soon. I mean, it was literally so soon. It was like a month after I came out to them. Um, And it was beautiful. Like it, it was the best feeling. And I think that a lot of people will be shocked too with parents who love them, like being with family who loves you at the end of the day. And that, and that was the thing too, for me is that I think everyone in my life, my family, my friends, everybody in my life saw me in a completely new light. Everyone for the first time saw that I had happiness. Like I was radiating happy. Like I would, and that's something that a lot of people did tell me, like, I've genuinely never seen Brie this happy before. Um, and it's true. Like, I, because when you feel like you're missing something and you, you figure it out and you find that piece of you, it's like the final piece to loving yourself. And as cliche as it is, you know, you really can't love somebody else to love yourself. And my girlfriend, meeting my girlfriend, was the missing piece for myself and so uh, for the first time I was able to look into the mirror and not hate myself and not hate everything about me like not tear myself down like not tear my body down and not you know have these mean thoughts towards myself um because it made sense like and I was happy and someone was showing me unconditional love and uh, to have that even is just like wow, that is so new. It really was new. I I never had that in the past. Everything was very conditional. Everything was very like, you know, this or that, ultimatums, blah, 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 blah. Very toxic, very manipulative. This was like a healthy, this was, this is a very healthy relationship. And, you know, it made my coming and talking to my mom about it. I was really scared, but she was so like, supportive and loving in the sense of she could see for the first time how happy her daughter is and like her daughter was truly like doing good and her daughter finally loved herself because you like you've heard in the past episodes my parents had to see a lot of really dark sides of me um and I think at the end of the day it's brought me closer with my family um I'm like going to see them literally I go to see them every week, basically. I I love my family and I'm very thankful um, for all of these experiences. And I know it's, it's a scary thing to come out, even like, you know, going public about it was a very big thing for me too. um, Because I'd never been public in the past with anything um, and realizing that like, I do have this platform where, you know, people can say things and, it's so easy for people to say things behind the internet. Like we talked on last week. Um, and it was a big thing for me because people speculated things in the past. And so, you know, anytime anyone speculated anything, um, it was always with a guy and, you know, that's just what people assumed about me. And, um, I mean, rightfully so that, cause that's what I assumed about me. <laughs> so I, I get it. And, Going public was a very, like, big decision for both of us, and it was something that, you know, she was very, like, whenever you are ready, like, you know, I want to make sure that you feel ready and that you feel comfortable and that you feel safe and da da which was amazing. Just, you know, she's so supportive and so understanding, literally the most understanding person in the world, and we decided to go public literally on Valentine's day. It was kind of like a weird last minute decision, like the night before. <laughs> um, but it was just time at that point we had been dating, I don't know, probably almost six months, maybe, I don't know, five months. Um, and I felt so ready. There was like nothing, no doubt in my head. There was nothing that I, like, I was thinking of the worst comment possible and I was just like it doesn't even matter like it, it like I don't care because this is like the most me I've ever felt this is the most authentic I've ever felt and I want to put that out there I want to be 100% myself um everybody in my personal life knew everybody from team Kaylee knew she literally came to my premiere um 
and I, I brought her out to, <laughs> it was so funny. Um, I, I brought her out um, to our premiere when Team Kaylee first came out, we had a big billboard at the Grove and the whole cast was meeting there and production was meeting there at the Grove to just like have lunch and uh, see the billboard. And we walk around the corner and I was just like, guys, this is my girlfriend. And everybody just kind of looked at me like, uh, you, yes, uh, yes, uh, welcome. You know, it was like the most like amazing thing. She'd been a part of literally everything. She came with me to New York when I did a Team Kaylee press thing. I went on her tour when she opened up for Phineas. Like anyone in our personal life knew. And so it was like, okay, well, now it's time to let, you know, the people who support me and follow me and, you know, really like, people who actually like weirdly enough care to see like what I'm doing like which is still a crazy concept to me that people follow me and care what I'm doing <laughs> but um, they do believe me <laughs> I've talked to many of them all month long <laughs> and I've bombarded some of their feeds I'm like yo come on over so they do they do and they really do love you I'm sure they're just like in awe right now listening to your story and just like super proud and super excited no, it's cra it is crazy. Um, like just even like leading up to going public, uh, especially because like we literally went to Paris together at the beginning of the year for her birthday, uh, and so like we had like kind of posted together, but never officially saying anything. Um, and yeah, uh, we came out. We came out. I came out on Valentine's <laughs> Day. We went public on Valentine's there you Day. Go. How did that make you feel? It was the most liberating feeling ever like it really was just to put it out there and be like hey guys this is who I am I did it in the most like non-emotional non like not this whole coming out post I literally was just like my modern coming out day story or my modern day coming out story and it was a picture of me and Lauren and then it was a picture of a tweet that I had that went viral and the tweet was um biggest lie of 2019 and I quoted it and I said I'm straight <laughs> and I was like that was like my way of coming out <laughs> to the world um so that was literally how I came out <laughs> and again I got so much so much love and support that I didn't even notice if there was any negativity if there any was any negative comments I didn't see it I didn't care um and it really was just the best feeling um and seeing how people, you know, who didn't, who were, are in my personal life, but at the time, maybe we weren't as close as we used to be. And so I didn't tell them because I don't see them every day. Just even seeing their reactions and having a lot of people reach out to me and like, especially the ones who saw me going through that really dark time and seeing like how light and happy I am and how healthy I look, like just physically, I just look healthy. I no longer have dark circles. Uh, my skin is not green. I, you know, look full my my therapist even was just like you like my therapist can always tell when I walk in what what specifically I'm going through and for the first time I would walk in and she'd just be like you had a good week you know just like things like that and so it's just like really awesome to hear that because again it's not that I need that validation in that sense it's just like wow it's really nice to see that like people can see how far I've come and like people can see how happy like truly like to the core happy I am I love that uh, I love that's a mixture of things as well like a part of like people can see how far you've come I do agree with that and also like showing up for yourself and allowing yourself to feel that love and know that you know, there is a community there. There is people yeah. there, not only your team, Kaylee, particular team, Brigana, but our set, of course, right. like all those, of course, but also like as a community of LGTB and plus, I know I, I have to remember it's more than just LGTB. So please, the streamer, yeah. <laughs> huge. there's more of you out there. I do understand. We're very, very, very aware of this <laughs> just in case. I don't want to be hollowed out as well. Like, hey, you forgot that. No, hold on. Sorry. Sorry. I know. I'm, I'm <laughs> pretty sure it's right now. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's LGBTQ plus. Um, but even me, like right now, like, and that's the thing that I love so much about the people who follow and support me is that they, like, I don't have mean fans. Everyone is so nice. Anyone who follows me, if I make a mistake, if I, you know, cause I am still learning and every day I'm learning and every day I'm growing. And 
Um, if I make a mistake, like I, no one wrecks me. No one like comes at me and calls me. They're just like, Hey, this is actually the correct term or this is actually what it is. And like, um, I, I have like these open conversations in my DMS with people and like we learn from each other. And I'm, I'm so thankful for that in itself. Like just such a beautiful community. Like no matter what anybody says, such a beautiful community. I've never felt more safe, honestly, like just in being who I am and being just accepted and just being loved and understood. It, it's just a beautiful I, feeling. I agree. I want to, I want to go back a little and we have so much to talk about this subject um about coming out what it means if we have to and all these sorts of things or if it's like if we have to in the sense of because straight people don't come out basically so like a lot of people are like oh you don't have to you just go like what you did you kind of like at your team kaylee um billboard thing <laughs> basically yeah. like oh this is my girl from lauren you know yeah when it was like in my case when it was i was saying my turn not my turn but in my case um i usually just casually mention it because for all those, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, for all of you who don't know, I'm bisexual. Like, why do, uh, my thing is always going back and forth, basically, in my brain. Because it's like, no, like, people, if you know me from the past, you know, I've had girlfriends. Or I've liked girls. And my crush, my closest friends know. It's like, oh, like, I have a crush. I'm like, oh, okay, so like, who? What's her name? Or what's his name? You know, what's their name? Usually that's what they would say. And, um, and point being to all this is just to find that community and to know it's there. It is difficult. Like, I understand completely. Not only because I'm part of that quote-unquote community, but just as a human being, I feel like if you met me as a person, of all the things that we did talk about this month, and if you have followed along the 53 other episodes of Go to Fly, you know, there's so many different episodes, different stories, different backgrounds, and you have to, like, comprehend. You have to understand that people are different, and that's difficult coming out or difficult going through certain circumstances. We're just here to tell you we've gone through our struggles and once again we're not going in super deep in this episode to be honest because there's plenty of other stuff we also want to you know talk about but at the same time it's like this is this is the result you get and we want you to have that feeling yep. one of um i have to give a huge shout out to the show that's just came out this year um love victor it's on hulu and it's 10 or 12 episodes i think just 10 episodes and it is such it's beautifully written Every single episode, I was like, oh my god, this is me. Oh my god, this is me. This is exactly what I went through. Like, this is, like, this is so important. And then there's an episode where, you know, he does find the community, and there's, like, this huge group hug, and you just feel it. You just know. And, like, I just bawled, like, so much. I think, like, (laughs) out of the ten episodes, I feel like the last three, I'm just, like, bawling. Like, this is so important. You know, I... (sighs) I can't appreciate it enough when people like you who use your platform for good. And I've told you this in previous episodes and I am an advocate of doing the same thing. I get the point. Like um, people are like, Oh my God, YouTube. Like I get it. But like, regardless, the more of us that we are out there, the better. I'm not only talking about LGTB plus all the sorts, of course. Um, But just being an advocate and platform for good. This is why I know it was important for you to be like, yo, this is me. Yeah, just being honest, I've always had um, in my personal life, um, as far as like social media and everything, I've always had a certain barrier um, because I keep some things to myself. Like I do have to have my life, you know. And yeah, yeah, same goes, same goes. Like, yeah, I do a lot of Insta stories and whatnot, but you have to have some sort of privacy at the end of the day because you're entitled to it, obviously. 100%. One hundred percent. So it's like for me, it's like just being like I said, like I've never told my full story about coming out. Um, I've never, as far as like really like those first like four months, um, that you know it wasn't easy, and I don't know when I'll ever be able to talk about that, you know. But right now, that's just something that like I like to keep to myself, and like um, you know, it's still really fresh and at the end of the day, like, for me, it's like, okay, like, no one needs to know that right now, what they, what I feel like I'm here to do is encourage, and no matter what those four months were for me, um, I'm here now, like, happier than ever, and I made it out, like, we, there is just, like, I I can't stress it enough, and every freaking episode that it does get better, and, like, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and, 
at the end of the day, I think the one thing that really like just kept me strong through everything um, was finally feeling like I had something to stand up for and finally finding my voice and finally fighting for something because in the last 22 years of my life, I've always, again, I've talked about in the last episode, I've always been super easy to take advantage of because I always wanted to be the nice girl and blah, blah, blah. And I didn't know even like what I would fight for, like what I'm standing up for, what, like, I felt like I didn't have a voice in any capacity. And especially growing up with like a very like black and white, I guess, kind of idea of the world to finally realize it's not just black and white. There's a lot of other colors, you know, and to realize that on my own, you know, not have somebody else tell me, not have somebody else tell me like what to say, what to do, what's right, what's not, to like make that decision on my own, to realize that I don't have to agree with everything that I was taught growing up. I can have my own beliefs. I can formulate my own opinions. I can formulate what it is that I have faith in. Like that's something that I think kept me so headstrong versus like giving into the heart, like giving into not wanting to fight, giving into, well, this isn't worth the fight. Like, no, this is, this is worth a fight because I'm fighting for myself and I'm fighting for who I am. And I think that's something in itself that's like more liberating than anything else is to just fight for yourself and to stand up for yourself. And I don't think I've ever stood up for myself until all of this, until I met my girlfriend, until I found who I am and like a really big part of myself, you know? Um, And so I think that at the end of the day, that is what kept me going. That's what keeps me like very headstrong. And that's what helped me through this whole, not to bring that in right now. I know I talked about it on Latina, but during the whole protesting and all of that, like, I, I can't say that a year ago, I would have had that voice and I would have had, you know, the strength to be out there on the streets every single day and to be posting no matter what anyone says. Cause I'm not going to lie. I got a lot of backlash for that stuff and I didn't care one bit. And it's because I finally did have that voice and I finally found what it is that I, I stand for. And I know it's like super repetitive in the last five minutes, but <laughs> it, it is like, it, it's like, without that, I, I wouldn't have been able to do half of the things that I'm doing. And Um, you know, I opened up to you about something that I faced recently during quarantine. And again, I really feel like everything happens for a reason. Like, I don't think I could have faced half the shit that I've had to face in the last three months if it wasn't for this part of me, if it wasn't for like loving myself, because that's what it is, is that I, I finally loved myself. I finally felt worthy and someone made me feel worthy and like, like something wasn't wrong with me, like loved me for literally every single part of me. I I hid my K-pop posters from her. Like I hid all 400 of my K-pop posters from her. She found them within a week under my couch and she didn't run away. And I was like, ah, this is the one. Um, You know, just like things like that. Even like when, you know, my friend uh, passed away not too long ago and I don't, again, I don't think I could have gone through that. I don't think I would have been able to handle that a year ago. And she was right by my side the whole time. And I reconnected. It it, it brought on a lot of things. Um, I'm not going to get too into that either. But it, it was a lot of feelings, reconnecting with people who I didn't necessarily end on good terms with. And it was a lot to take on. It it was aside from just the situation it was. And to have her by my side, holding my hand the whole time and knowing that like, this is the person that I am going to lean on. I've never had anybody to lean on before. 
I never could ask anybody for help. I still struggle really badly with asking for help and saying what I need. And for the first time, there is someone who's not making me feel like a burden and not making me feel like I'm bothering them with my problems. Like just someone who is literally there wanting everything that I need, like just ready for it. And it's just really the best feeling in the world. When I say that in, you know, I do talk about her a lot because I wouldn't have found this part of myself without her. I I really do believe like we are soulmates. We are meant to be together. Um, And she is my better half. She really is. And so I feel very deeply about this and so yeah, I'm just, I'm really, I'm really thankful. And it is the best feeling to just be out there and just to be me and not have to like pretend or question anything. As I hold pause so I can dry up my tears. Because <laughs> 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 holy moly. You made a lot of people cry out of emotion. <laughs> and just feel all the feels. Um, the, the thing you said the most is a part that you love her, of course, that you said that a lot, um, to love yourself. And the way to love yourself, I feel like if anyone who's been listening all month long and through Go to Fly with me, the Always Believers in general, because it's a community, it's all us, you know, it, it's, it's daily work. You, you, we mentioned the therapist quite a few times, not only in this episode, but in previous ones. You mentioned all the inner work that you had to deal with, all your emotions that you had to go with. And because once again, this is coming from a person who does know you (laughs) on a personal level and you have shared struggles with me that we haven't shared online just yet because we don't want to. And same goes both ways, obviously. So we all have a private life. I feel like those were made possible because like we said, everything does happen for a reason, but most of all, you, you started loving yourself. And when it comes to this topic, any topic I feel like self-love is still very taboo and very like you shouldn't and whatnot and I get just I've gotten like backlash or whatever like oh you have so many tattoos and you're you dye her million colors or you should lose weight and all these sorts of things and it's just pushing those comments away it's like no I know who I am and I know I love myself I love my Disney like I don't really publish a lot of it on those blue why would I but in my personal life like everyone knows that's like oh I have a million stuffed animals or whatever you know oh I love skulls like it goes both ways and we were saying before and just knowing who you are so I feel like within everything that we're talking about people would have to understand especially because we have a younger crowd, but even if you're 12 or 52, it doesn't matter. Like find ways to love yourself, find ways to know who you are, like journal and fill your feed, especially because we're on Instagram all the time. We're on social people. We were on TikTok all the time. We're, you know, all these sorts of things. Find people that can lift you higher. You might not know them, you know, but people who are generally going to like provoke inner thoughts in a good way. And I feel like, you know, it's really important to, to put out there because I know I touched on it a little bit, but like, you know, not being able to fully love someone until you love yourself. And I feel like my circumstances and my situation was very, um, you know, a little different in the sense of I felt like, and I, I've said this before, I felt like I needed to find my girlfriend in order to find that piece of myself or else I would have never found it because... I was genuinely, I'm not, I'm not meant to be with anybody else. So I would have never found that piece of me and I would have never understood why I was never whole. And I know there's people out there who do know this side of them and don't have maybe that person, but they do understand their feelings and they understand who they are. And that can cause a lot of confusion and self-doubt and a lot of you know, depending on how you grew up, like, this is just stuff that I've noticed, you know, from what people have told me in my DMs, like, it is hard to love yourself, especially, you know, when you're in a situation where you may not feel that support from anybody. And just know that there is a full community out there who does support you and love you. And you will find that. But it really does start with yourself as cliche as it is, like, just just finding that peace within yourself. And I, I mean, I had to go through it in my relationship. Like 
we had our struggles, you know, with me still trying to find, because, you know, of course in the beginning it's all happy and rainbows and butterflies, but you know, there, there are going to be those times where it is hard and you are struggling. And, um, you know, I'm very lucky to have somebody who was there with me through it all, but I did have to still go through that finding the inner peace and finding the love within myself. And the second that I did that, it only made our relationship closer, stronger and blossom into the beautiful thing that it is now. And so just don't, deny who you are because I know not everyone is as lucky as me in the sense of having a supportive community like supportive friends and um that you know kind of just surrounding and that's why social media is amazing because exactly. they're so like find it positive it's like find your tribe in that kind of sense follow us we have plenty of resources and every single episode we've given you resources so that's super important for us as well but because of that because like i had a really difficult time coming out like my story is completely not the opposite by any means because i know there's certain struggles here and there but it's a lot of inner struggle and it's a lot of like not knowing who you like or what you like or who you are mm-hmm. and it's also like without going into it to further once again because it's a really big topic um yeah. you know it's a lot of the toxic vibes this is why the whole storyline of the whole month if you really backtrack brianna's story was well, so we started with eating disorder we started with addiction we talked like it all lines up basically because the part that was missing in, in your particular case everything else like everything else happened because of that and vice like same goes for me like i was also very um easy to take advantage of like you keep saying which I do adore that analogy that Lauren actually said to you because like it's actually true because it's kind of like oh you want me to wear pink I'll wear pink and all these sorts of things so point being with all this we we're not sharing those right now but not because we're hiding them but just because we want to give you the perspective like there is a tribe there is people you have to love yourself and we're happy to give you resources we're happy to reach out like we've go through the dms and yeah. As always, we're not, you know, we're human beings. We might not be able to get to all of them, but find ways that your life can be fulfilled in that kind of way. That's yes. one of our biggest things, without a doubt. As yeah. we continue, um, almost wrapping up this, this, this last episode, and all of you are like, no, we want more. <laughs> uh, you will get one more. By the way, I don't know if you know this, by the way, um, all of you out there listening, this month's special guest. Who's this month's special guest? Because every so, like, let me backtrack one more before we know the answer to this one. Every month here at Those Believer, we have special guests, and it's always the last day of each month. And this month of August, who's our special guest? None other than my beautiful, amazing, talented superstar woman girlfriend, Lauren Sanderson. Yay! Yay. I love her. <laughs> I love her so much. <laughs> I love her so much. <laughs> So cute, so cute, I swear. <laughs> You're adorable. Oh, I was like, I miss you. I miss hugging you. I miss, oh my God, freaking year, I swear. Anyways, point being, yes, so, <laughs> yeah, I definitely. Oh my God, so much love. Um, you are not getting rid of us just yet. Believe me, mark our words. We're we're a team. Brianna, any of that? You'll you'll there's more coming. But anyways, <laughs> apart from that, you'll see uh Lauren and a special surprise on august 31st so this upcoming monday Yay. basically so we can hear her side of the story and a bunch of other goodies as well like yeah so there was this crazy girl who like just like stalked, stalked me, me for a year me. basically <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, she didn't want to tag me i don't understand why she didn't want to tag me but i'm like okay it was really weird i was just like okay whatever sure <laughs> <laughs> so we'll hear that part on monday <laughs> Oh my god, if that wasn't enough for you, there you go. Um, so, before we hit the next little special part of, the sh- of this episode, because it's the last one with you individually, for now, obviously, what do you want to tell your 15-year-old self? Oh my god, what a year 15 was. Um, mm-hmm. god. Honestly, if I could talk to 15-year-old me... It's really, uh, this is going to sound really like really Brie. I would just say, keep going. It gets better. I wouldn't. And I know, I know I, she's laughing. She's like, of course you would say it gets better. That's how you've been. Like, 
asking myself, like, what would Ariana say to herself? Like, always believe, just keep going. Just, it's going to no, be fun. Be yourself. Because I didn't have that at the time and I didn't understand a lot of things at 15. But like I said, I don't believe in coincidences. I think everything happens for a reason. And sure, I went through a lot of really fucked up shit in the last, you know, six or seven years of my life since I was 15. Maybe eight. I forgot I'm 23 now. Um, but I needed to hear that. And I don't think anything, anything happened that should have been changed because I'm here now. I'm the happiest and healthiest I've ever been. I have stories to tell. I'm thankful. I'm blessed. I believe that we are not put in situations that we can't handle. And I really am thankful that I went through these things so that I can use my platform to help those who are 15 or younger or older and 50 and still figuring it out. Cause we're all figuring it out every day. We're going to be figuring it out till we die. You know, that nothing, nothing is permanent. Everything is temporary. And so I, I literally, as you know, boring or whatever, as it sounds, I, I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't, I would just, tell her to keep going and it gets better because I know what it's like to feel like it won't, but it does. I am living, breathing proof that it does. I love you so much. <laughs> That's the first thing. <laughs> cause I agree, of course. And I'm like, I, it's the same answer with like, I would do. Cause I was like, I went through a whole lot, but I, I wouldn't be myself if I didn't go through that. So here I am. Yeah. Um, I feel like I knew, and I, I feel like I know your answer for the next question. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just have a slight hunch because I know you so well, <laughs> but um, <laughs> the question is, what would you tell your future self? <laughs> oh God. Um, just take a guess. Just, I'm just curious what you think it would be. I think it's just a magical three words. I mean, if you're out there, you know, if you can speak these words into existence with me right now, whether you're in the car or going for a walk, let's shout out with me. It gets better. <laughs> it does. Like, I'm so, I'm so thankful. And like my future self, God, who the hell knows what future self is going to have been through by that time, you know? Uh, but I'm just taking life one day at a time these days, especially during quarantine. What else can you do? Um, and again, like future self is going to be, totally fine. She's going to be fine. No matter what she's, she's going to be she's more gonna... than fine. She's going to be glowing Hell and yeah. growing and hyping Hell people yeah. up. Hell yeah. Oh, she's going to be me. on the number one podcast in the world as a guest <laughs> with Miss Ariadna. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. How I just won an Oscar. Hopefully you know, that's where we're going to be. That's exactly, exactly. <laughs> we're going to play this episode back and be like, remember when we were doing the Zoom podcast? Exactly. <laughs> it's going to be a whole thing. We have, I swear, you better hang on tight to the Always Believer and I need the My Personal Profile because Brianna and me are coming back for so much more. We're just, we're oh, just going to have to wait a little till quarantine's over, but we're almost there. We can do this. Yeah. <laughs> we're making magic happen anyway, but yes, we that's where you're going to be. We made it this far. <laughs> we can do a little bit more. Um, I definitely, yep, there you go. That's what we see. Yep, I like, I like this a lot. And we can't say anything else just yet, but yeah. All right, so definitely, definitely for last. Um, we have a very special little corner for your last episode because I thought this would be a fun idea. All righty, all right. And it's a lightning round. So okay. I'm going to give you a bunch of questions. Perfect. And you got to think of, like, I'm going to say the first thing comes to your mind. This is not a long answer question. Well, I mean, if you need it to be, sure. But this is, you know. Lightning round. I'll, I'll get it together. <laughs> exactly. For the last, like, more or less 10 minutes of this podcast, we can do this. This is, this is special for all your fans who have been with us all month long. Yeah. So, I mean, the first ones, I mean, well, they're a little bit of everything, to be honest. Anyways, sure. first question is, who matters most to you? Oh, uh, easily. My girlfriend, my family, and my friends. Just, you know, that my supporters, my fans, everybody who I've talked to and about this whole podcast, <laughs> literally. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you didn't know, we were planning this podcast for a while before it came out, and she Thank told you. the world that she was so hyped up. Like, all her friends were like, oh my god, like, I know all about podcasts. Like, we can't wait for Brianna. So it's only you guys. It's like her whole world. 
which is just like, <laughs> love it. <laughs> this is how important this podcast and this message is for her. Um, what do you do to show yourself self-compassion and self-care? Um, I mean, my favorite form of self-care that I've discovered in the last month is just working out uh, is my biggest stress reliever. So working out, um, doing little skincare routines here and there, and honestly cleaning my house uh, whenever I'm like really, de- you know, at, whenever I'm like really depressed, uh, you can really tell by my house. So just upkeeping the things around me, just little things here and there to just, you know, show myself some love. What do you do when you're feeling stressed or overwhelmed to center yourself? Uh, working out, but mostly playing music, writing on my piano and my guitar. Nice. What are you passionate about? So many things. I am one passionate human being. <laughs> uh, I could, I'm looking at this bottle of Tapatio in front of me and I'm just like, God, I love Tapatio. So, uh, you know, I'm passionate about so many things, um, especially my music, my craft, my art. Um, and also I'm very passionate about being a voice for my generation and hopefully one day having a platform big enough to reach more people and share these stories. Uh, yeah, <laughs> short answer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what do you do in order to make sure that you become a better version of yourself every day? I know it sounds repetitive. Uh, working out is a really big thing for me because, um, because of the unhealthy things I've done in the past to achieve, you know, what it is that I want. And so working out is my biggest form of self love and to be a better version of myself. Also going to therapy. I know it sounds crazy, but just talking and, um, talking to my girlfriend, she's just someone who I think knows every little thing about me. So, uh, not to keep, you know, going off about that, but that's, that's really like the three biggest things right now. What's your favorite movie? <laughs> Spirited Away is my favorite movie right now. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay, what's your favorite band? Favorite band is Heart from the 80s. Female band. For the nice. What's your favorite food? Uh, before I was vegan, pizza. Uh, now that I'm vegan, what is my favorite food? V- uh, vegan pizza, I guess. <laughs> Beans. No, I take it back. Beans. Beans are literally my all-time favorite food of all time. All-time favorite food of all time. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> I love it. What's your favorite go-to drink? Um, alcoholic or virgin? Whatever you like. <laughs> Say both if you feel like. Okay. Uh, my go-to alcoholic drink is just a very simple vodka club. Love it, you know. Um, and then my favorite drink is a very berry hibiscus from Starbucks, but with no berries. That is very crucial. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> What's your favorite color? My favorite color is black, but favorite like color that's not black is purple. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Favorite animal? Elephant. I love that. I do. I know what elephants mean and all that stuff. Oh gosh. This is a fast round, so I have to like go to the I know. Like, like, oh. <laughs> I'm just like elephant. That's it. <laughs> yes. What is your favorite place? Um mm, my favorite place. Uh, my girlfriend's apartment. <laughs> I'm so sick <sorry> there. <laughs> I know where Lauren is, basically. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Literally <laughs> together. Yeah, I didn't want to go that hard, but like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, but yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, so for my three, these are questions that I ask for every single guest, and because it's your last episode with us so far, I know, I know. Um, describe yourself in three words. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Passionate. Lighthearted. I use comedy for everything. Um, and empathetic. M- maybe a little too <laughs> empathetic sometimes. <laughs> um, but definitely, definitely empathetic. Good. What are you grateful for? Everything. Literally everything. Everything in my life. I wouldn't change one thing. And last and definitely not sweet, as always, where can we find you, darling? Ah! 
got Brianna Salas. Simple enough. Like to keep it nice and easy. <laughs> Very good. Any last piece of advice? Any words? Anything else you want to tell us? Gets better. There you it go. gets better. better. This is just temporary. Quarantine is just temporary. It is. We're gonna it come really out is. of it. Trust me, like I said before, it's kicking my ass too. Yeah, we have kicking my ass too as well. Yeah. Holy. Like, we have plenty of conversations about that one. Yes, uh, we do. So, you know, just we're here. On. Yeah. We're here to make it as real as possible. So if you do exactly. follow along and through our Insta stories and our feeds, we do say, we, we, like, I admit I'm sad or I admit that I'm stressed and it's like. Oh, yeah. You'll definitely see, like, you know, if when you do follow me, if you follow me, if you have been following me, you know that I have those days. Like, I'm not always this upbeat, lighthearted person. I always try to find the light in everything, but there are going to be those days and, you know, not to concern anybody, just, you know, putting myself out there and everything. And it's okay. We're, we're literally all in the same boat and we're all doing it. We're all figuring it out together. That's, that's correct. And you're not alone. This was the reason why I started to always believe it because remember, we are not alone. We're in this together, not only through quarantine, but just in general, yep. this is a community where you can find so much love and appreciation and support and empathy and people who are going to rise and lift you up. I'm super thankful. I'm super thankful for, of course, everything, but most of all right now for you, not only because I have you in my life as a friend, you are a humongous treasure in my life. I, I love that life connected us because I'm much like you. I also believe that everything happens for a reason. I love yes. our projects. They're coming up together. I love our million talks. I love our tattoos coming up. So much more <laughs> coming up. Um, but most of all, of course, right now, the second with the Always Believer, I appreciate that you've been with us for the past month, in general, your birthday month, Woo! and for you to be brave and courageous and fearless and just want to share this message to the world that it gets better, of course, of course, and that we're in it together, that we're here as real, as raw as we can be. Absolutely. So thank you so thank much you. for everyone listening. Thank you for your comments, your likes, your shares. Your questions, uh, stay tuned for the takeover. It is coming our way because um, she, you, she will take over the, the Always Believer Instagram, which we're so excited with all your little questions, little big questions. I don't say why a little, but all your questions in general. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you once more. Um, thank you so much for like literally just being an incredible human across the board, but also just an amazing friend, someone I literally will text throughout the day and randomly just be like I'm sad and you're just always there no matter what you're going through you're always there and that's something that you don't find in a lot of people and life brought us together for a reason and I'm so thankful so blessed to have you in my life and this is just only going to get better and stronger from here and just so so thankful for you in general I agree that's what friends are for that's what Hell friendship yeah. is so once again, our door is always open. Our, our hearts are always open. Um, stay tuned for Monday where we have her beautiful girlfriend because if you haven't heard about her before, apparently, you'll hear about her <laughs> <laughs> on Monday. Well, you'll probably hear from her. So I right, guess right. We got, there you go, you know? Yeah, exactly. You'll get to hear her voice. <laughs> exactly. So stay tuned for that. And for another special surprise in that episode, I feel like some of you already know what's up, but nonetheless, it's Laura. Lauren Sanderson this Monday, August 31st, and another special surprise coming your way. All right. All my love to every single one of you, Team Flyer. I freaking love you all. I love you, Brianna. Thank you so much once again for being here with us. Oh my God. No, you're freaking amazing. Thank you for having me this whole time. Bye. Bye.